the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to a Thursday edition of Locked on Warriors. I'm Wes Goldberg, Warriors beat writer for the Mercury News. Make sure to subscribe here on YouTube. Follow the podcast wherever you get podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, and everywhere else for episodes every day, Monday through Friday. And today, despite what we are saying over here, it being La Tuesday, it's not La Tuesday. Instead, it's La Thursday based on Connor and I's schedule this week. We couldn't do the normal La Tuesday. We're changing it to La Thursday. Connor, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on uh, a later date than normal, but I appreciate you having me nonetheless. Yeah, you had to celebrate getting older. I understand it. You were probably <laughs> drunk and hungover, and you couldn't. You weren't in tip-top shape for Tuesday. But instead, we got you on a Thursday. Yeah, you know, the big 3-1, man. You know, it's not 30, but hey, you know, still. I think we still... should all get one birthday docked from our total because of the pandemic. Like your pandemic birthday yeah. doesn't count. So we should all yeah. just go back. One yeah, more. my 31st birthday was a lot more fun than my 30th. So I'll just count that one as my 30th. Yeah, I think I talked to you on FaceTime on my 30th. Oh yeah, I did like a whole FaceTime happy hour with a bunch of friends on yeah, my 30th actually, birthday. Yeah, actually I fully enjoyed your 30th birthday. Would have been more fun if we did it in person though. It would have. Uh I got just as drunk. Um so we got a bunch of things that I want to talk to. Uh I want to talk about Kelly Oubre and his free agency that's coming up and then of course we've got La Tuesday slash La Thursday trivia coming up later in the episode which uh Connor, you got a lot of uh props for last week and your performance last week. So I expect you to follow that up with another stellar performance this week. Uh, but let's start here with actually a, your colleague, Rusty Simmons, uh, for the San Francisco Chronicle, wrote a story about um, Kevin Love potentially getting recruited by Draymond Green. And it's something that I've hit on on this podcast uh, for the last couple of weeks, is that this Olympic uh, experience is an opportunity for guys like Draymond and others to recruit each other, right? We know this is how this happens. The Olympics, the World Cup, things like that. Guys tend to recruit in these types of situations, and you go up and down that roster. There's Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard, all these kinds of guys that I'm sure Draymond Green, I mean, we already went down to the Durant road, but with, in terms of Beal and Lillard, guys that I'm sure Draymond would love to play with. Uh, but the name that always stuck, to, stuck out to me was Kevin Love because he's a guy who could conceivably negotiate a buyout, Blake Griffin style, and then sign to any team that he wants to and sort of negotiate this thing in the background with the with with his soon-to-be teammates, whether it be with Golden State and Draymond Green or another team. So here's the quote, uh, again, from Rusty Simmons' piece. Obviously, and this is from Kevin Love. Obviously, with Draymond, it's a love-hate relationship, but we've become actually pretty close friends over the past few years. I love how he competes, his mind for the game, his intangibles, how he leads the break, he passes, he plays defense, and it seems like he's always in the right spot. He's first-team all-defense, and has been the defensive player of the year for a reason. So I think we can elevate each other's game. Now, of course, Kevin Love is talking about how they can elevate each other's game on Team USA for the Olympics that are coming up this month. But the same much hold true if they were played for the Warriors together. What do you think about a Kevin Love fit in Golden State, Connor? I love it. I love it. I think I think it's a phenomenal fit because the Warriors need a passing big, and he's a great passer. He reads the floor really well. It's one of his greatest skill sets. He's also a three-point shooter, um, can space the floor. I think I think he'd be a phenomenal fit for what they want to do offensively. I think he'd slide right in. And, you know, I think he'd even play that five spot for them. I know he's more of a four, but I think he could be a, a starting five for them. Um, I think it'd be a phenomenal fit alongside Draymond and Steph and Clay. I think I think that, that would make so much sense. Now, is that actually going to happen? I think it's a long shot. I think it's a long shot because I think, I think if if he does get a buyout, he's he's going to go to a team that is ready made to 100% contend for a title, and I don't think the Warriors are quite there yet. And I think that he would have a couple teams ahead of the list, on the list ahead of the Warriors. Unfortunately for the Warriors. Yeah, um, I think the the. I think the Warriors are sort of widely considered very close to being a 
a championship caliber, at least contender, right? And obviously whatever happens with the seventh pick, with the 14th pick, if they nail one or two of those picks, that obviously elevates them. And if they get a guy like Kevin Love, I think that would be helpful, but I don't know that adding a guy like Kevin Love changes necessarily the the uh, the floor for this team, right? I think what it does is it gives you one other tool. It could potentially change the ceiling of this team, add some more much needed depth and things like that. I I think that's actually interesting what you said. I w- I just assumed had they added Kevin Love that he would just come off the bench as a four or a five, but I think you're right. Like if if what it takes to get Kevin Love is to promise him the starting job at the at center which is exactly what Brooklyn had to do to get Blake Griffin, right? I mean, they had to start, and people were wondering, why are you starting him over a guy like Nick Claxton or even DeAndre Jordan, who started earlier in the year? Uh, they say, well, that's basically what you do to get Blake Griffin in the door. And if that's what it took for the Warriors, I think they would start Kevin Love, right? Because I, I think what you're seeing here, it's something that I talked about last week with Bram on my podcast, is how much defense would you be willing to sacrifice for offense? Because this is the 20th rated offense in the league, fifth rated defense in the league, you need to get that offense into the top 10. Clay coming back will obviously be helpful, but adding a guy like Kevin Love who could space the floor, who could pass at a really high level, high basketball IQ, he can rebound at a high level both on both ends of the floor. The Warriors are a bad rebounding team, so that'll obviously be helpful. And it gives you some size that you need too, uh, even if there's something left to, uh, uh, to be said on the defensive end overall. But yeah, I think he would be re- tremendously helpful, but I agree with you also. He's going to have a lot of suitors coming after him, right? I mean... I was reading a story in the Miami Herald uh, uh, Wednesday morning. Bam Adebayo has a lot of similar quotes to like what we're reading here from Kevin Love. I mean, these there every other team kind of looks at Kevin Love. Every other player playing for a team looks at Kevin Love on that Olympic team like, hey, we would like to have you on a roster. Guy with championship experience. Guy with still obviously helpful skill sets and things like that. Um, let's see what you look like during the Olympics. And let's see if we can get you to negotiate a buyout and come to us. And I think it's kind of going to be a little bit of a kind of Kevin Love's decision, right? The ball is going to almost be in his court if he does agree to a buyout, which at this point, I mean, you got your money, man. You have the taste for the, you have your taste of the finals. You're on a rebuilding team in Cleveland. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. I kind of, I kind of think that this is going to happen because another quote that he had during the Olympics was, we'll see how this works for my, for the, for Team USA, and then whatever team I'm on next year. And I'm paraphrasing, but that was essentially the quote. Kind of sounds like he's not ready to go back to the Caps. I mean, he's been – it's been well chronicled that he's been unhappy in Cleveland for years. Yeah. For years. For, for the past couple of seasons, he's had two or three um, moments each season on the court where it was noticeable how pissed off he was yeah, just about that situation. bulleting the ball to teammates on inbounds. I mean, wonderfully exciting. But not if you're the GM of of the Cavaliers. No, no. But I, you can't blame him. I mean, for someone who's where he's at in his career, who was a part of that uh, special run in Cleveland with LeBron, it's just got to be an incredibly frustrating situation to be a part of. So um, I get it. I get it. Um, but, you know, and there's been, uh, you know, talk in Portland. Can he come back to Portland? He's a, a Portland area native. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone's going to get in line, especially given what the, the, the contract will probably be. I mean, he'll, he'll be so much more talented than that contract would warrant. So, um, definitely an intriguing topic. And look, if there's any one I can, I can, I would want in Tokyo to try to sell Kevin Love on the Warriors. I would want Draymond. Draymond's probably going to be in his ear every day, dude, dude. And yes, to, to your point, he would 100% be the starter because yeah. he partly just because he's way more talented than Kevon Looney. Like, Kevon Looney is a very helpful player, great for the Warriors. We've talked about what he brings many times. We all know what he does, and he's good at it. He's not Kevin Love. Right. Kevin Love's a better Kevin Love player. Kevin Love had a down season, but you're absolutely right. Even his down season, you look at the stats. I mean, he's still scoring 12 and a half points per game. Also, a bunch if, of rebounds. He's a good screener, just like Kevon is. If the worst could somehow get Kevin Love, how expendable is James Wiseman at that point? Well, that's a that's a <laughs> he's your number three center. That's a good point. Um, you know what? Let's put a pin in that. We'll take our break here. Uh, it's time for the Michelob Ultra moment of the week. We've all been there, the feeling after a great win, or after you've nailed a presentation at work, or maybe you've just gotten back from your first run in months and you're exhausted, sweaty, and proud. 
It's these little moments that define our days. And what better way to celebrate them than with a Michelob Ultra? Because they know that enjoying these moments is the key to happiness. And Connor, I'll, I'll let you give me your moment, but I'll tell you my moment first. Last Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday. I had a day off, did some errands, cleaned around the house a little bit, did some, did my thing. And by 3, 3.30, I was done with everything that I needed to do in the day. I had the whole day in front of me. Uh, I don't even think there was a playoff game that night, or maybe there was. Uh, but I just looked around. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a cigar. I'm going to have a whiskey. And that's what I did. I went outside. I smoked a cigar. I drank a whiskey. And I didn't read anything. I didn't watch TV. I just stared off into the sky and just enjoyed just being. And... and uh, ended up just doing that. It was great. I probably should have had a Michelob Ultra, but I thought the cigar went better with the whiskey. Do you have a moment? Yeah. Um, well, I will give you a moment, but let me preface this by saying that I had a really good three or four day straight stretch. It was my birthday and my, my family came down from Portland and it was their first time coming down to visit me down here in a very long time. My sister, who actually lived in the D.C. area for 15 years, it was her first time ever visiting me in Alameda where I live now. I've lived in Alameda for four years. Last time she had visited me in the Bay, I lived in San Francisco six years ago. So it was her first time seeing my life in, in Alameda and uh, my parents' first time coming down here in two years, a year and a half. Um, so it was really nice to just show everyone my life in Alameda and kind of where I live and the, my spots and um, got to spend some time with my girlfriend, my girlfriend's daughter, and my niece, who's my girlfriend's daughter's age. Got to spend time with her and develop a friendship. So overall, great few days. But yeah. if I had to pinpoint a moment, the moment was uh, at Bay Farm Island, uh, next you know part of Alameda. There's this beautiful lookout that, and I I take my bike rides there all the time. But there's this beautiful lookout overlooking the city on the water. And uh, I had like a picnic dinner with my family and my girlfriend, my girlfriend's daughter. And, uh, you know, was just watching my niece and my girlfriend's daughter who were both four playing with each other and was just like, yo, this is, this is what life's about right here. Like, this is what it is. Like that it was like a moment where I was just like, like just watching this is what it's all about. You painted a picture, Connor, that, that is, that's the moment. That's the moment. It beats my beats my uh, cigar and, and alcohol moment. Uh, go check out tons of other exciting ultra moments with the hashtag ultra moment. Michelob Ultra, 2.6 carbs, 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Today on the road to the finals, our NBA playoffs coverage is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. At 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, we can all enjoy the games a little bit more this season. Here with Connell Letourneau from the San Francisco Chronicle, we are talking all things Warriors. Uh, we're going to get to some Kelly Oubre news here in a minute. And then, of course, we'll have La Thursday, which is previously known as La Tuesday trivia. But uh, we were talking about James Wiseman and how he might become expendable if the Warriors were to get a guy like Kevin Love. I think you could play a three-man rotation of Kevin Love, Kevon Looney, and James Wiseman. And I agree. I, I know you're not saying that you can't do that, and it it would make Wiseman more of a luxury than a necessity, right? And I, and then you can get a, you can get a little playful with what you want to do as far as a trade is concerned with Wiseman. But I love that idea of a three-man unit at center, where I don't think you want Looney. I know that Looney played like 30 minutes per game down the stretch of last season. I don't think you want him doing that for the rest of his career, or even next season. I, he was healthy, but I don't think you could take that for granted. So if you can get those minutes down, you can get Wiseman's minutes up, and you could still give Kevin Love a good amount of minutes where he can sort of star in his role in that time, I think that three-man unit works really, really well. No, I, 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 think, I think it does work really well, but I, I, I'm not sure I would want – it, it to me it feels like kind of like a log jam. I mean, in terms of a basketball standpoint, yes, it works really well. But if you're talking about the future of the organization and what the ultimate goals are with Wiseman, I, I'm not sure I love that log jam. So I I I've been a proponent and on this podcast, on on my podcast, saying the Warriors need to be open to trading Wiseman. And I think that I'm given what we're hearing 
given what the possibilities out there might be, I think it might be more realistic for them to trade him this off season than we initially thought. And, uh, and I think that if you could work out a situation where you bring in Kevin Love as your starting center, you bring in Kevon Looney as your backup. I mean, honestly, you don't really need much more center minutes than that. You can plug in a, a guy or two, you know, Draymond or, or, or Juan Descona Anderson to fill it out when you need to. But those two guys will have the bulk of the minutes at center. And then, you know, if you're able to get another quality piece in a deal for Wiseman and, and the draft picks or what, what have you, then, uh, you know, maybe that's a cont- legitimate contending team. I think it yeah. is. Actually. If you could trade Wiseman for a guy on the perimeter with a little bit of size who can help you get into some interesting lineups with Draymond and Juan at center so that you don't necessarily need to have a third center on the roster or in the rotation. I, I think that this team needs three centers on the roster, just given Kavon. And if you do get Kevin Love, his health history as well, uh, you don't want to end up in the same situation you were in last year. But not he doesn't need to be in your night-to-night rotation, whoever that third big might be. And one of the things with Wiseman is I'm starting to see that, you know, we've talked so much about Wiseman being a part of a big deal, you know, and, and, and you know, for an all-star caliber guy. Whenever you have that conversation, you talk about Wiggins just to make mm-hmm. contracts match. And I'm starting to to believe that maybe the Warriors' best option is a smaller deal involving Wiseman, you know, not – not a deal that doesn't involve Wiggins because I actually think that Wiggins can be a really important piece going forward as you're starting small forward long term. And so what if you work out a deal for Wiseman and the two picks and maybe you throw in like a Jordan Poole, you know, and you move up to maybe like number three in the draft and you take Jalen Suggs or Jalen Green, whoever you want. And then maybe you toss in like a Larry Nance or, or you know, a, a, a helpful rotation player in there. I think I think that a deal along those lines might make more sense for yeah. the Warriors. I think if you have an opportunity to trade up and get Jalen Suggs, I think it's a no-brainer and you do it, right? Because I don't think it'll cost a ton. Um, or I, I shouldn't say that. It will cost a ton. But I don't know that it'll cost so much that it'll be a detriment in the immediate term for the Warriors, right? Even if it costs you both lottery picks and Wiseman, are you getting worse because of that in the short term? I I don't think you are, especially if you're moving up for a guy like Suggs, who we both think can help right now. Uh, look, I, I think you're probably right. And I think you're also right because that superstar swing might not even be available to the Warriors, right? And so barring that, yeah, depending on what this offseason looks like, I think they will explore trading Wiseman. I think they're open to trading Wiseman. I, I, I think that they're open to trading everybody on this roster other than Steph, basically, right? And so uh, and I, that's not breaking news. That's just logic. You know, if you're G, if you're Bob Myers, it's part of your job as the general manager. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I want to move on to Kelly Oubre uh, because I wrote a story Wednesday morning for the Mercury News. So I spoke with his agent. Um, Oubre has been in the news because on Tuesday he showed up on Chris Haynes's Posted Up podcast. And so you had that. I talked with his agent uh, before the Haynes podcast came out. The story just came out after the podcast. So. There's a lot of people out there saying, oh, well, this is just the agent trying to clean up after Ubre, who made a controversial appearance on the podcast. That's not what happened. I'm just telling everybody out there right now. Um, Ubre on the podcast, let's start there. Telling Chris Haynes, essentially, in regards to questions about whether or not he should, he should come off the bench next year, that he thought it was unfair that those were even questions. And I think that those comments got spun out of context a little bit uh, and, and it was kind of made, it made Ubre sound like he was saying, hey, me coming off the bench is unfair. No, I think if you listen to what the question is that Chris Haynes asked him. He said he was, it was in regards to the questions that Ubre got from media about assuming that he'd be coming off the bench. And he would come off the bench. Steve Kerr has said as much as he would come off the bench. But Kelly Ubre took that the wrong way, said it was unfair, said he was a guy who's gotten, is 25 years old, has gotten better and better, and he shouldn't be put in a box and all these things that Kelly Ubre likes to say. So that's one thing. Before we react to that, here's a quote from my story, uh, Connor. Quote, Bob Myers told uh, Terrell Harris, who's Ubre's agent, that the Warriors hope to re-sign Ubre this summer. They want him back, Harris said. We were on the same page. According to Harris, Ubre and the Warriors have a good relationship despite Ubre being moved to the bench last season. Um, that, those are a couple of quotes from my story. Where do you think Kelly Oubre is at this point? And do you think he would welcome a return back to the Warriors? Um, I, 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 You're right about those quotes being taken a little bit out of context. But just given 
his delivery in that interview and given kind of where it sounded like his, his head was at, I still think it's a long shot that he comes back to the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 I and I think I think it was a worthy story to write today. I think it was good that you reached out to the agent, but you know as well as I do, agents have agendas. Um, I think he was probably very, very careful in his wording with you. Um, look, the Warriors do want to resign him. We we already know that he want they they want to resign him because they want him as an asset. They don't necessarily feel like he's a long term fit, mm-hmm. but um, they want him as an asset. But it sounds like he's going to be asking for. 20 mil plus yeah yeah which was, yeah which is absurd yeah well that was my takeaway from that conversation too is him saying that look bob myers approached the eight uh Terrell harris a couple weeks ago during the draft combine in chicago said we want kelly back and that doesn't mean that the warriors are going to get kelly back uh, Her- uh Terrell harris then told me we're on the same page Reading between the lines, and this is kind of the point that I was trying to get across in that story. Reading between the lines is he's going to be asking for twenty million plus, probably. We'll see if he gets it. Uh, and in order for him to return to the Warriors, it would probably take that kind of money. And that's the same page that he and Bob Myers are on. It doesn't mean that they're going to give it to him. It just means that they're at a mutual understanding. And it's going to be really hard for the Warriors to give Ubre that kind of money. So I think what's going to happen, obviously, is that he's going to test the free agent market. He's going to see what's out there. And if $20 million isn't out there, then he'll start to weigh his options, right? The way the money that is available, what kind of role he'll be able to play, what kind of opportunity for growth there is in that organization, whether or not that organization's offering a long-term deal because this is a guy who's bounced around the league for a while and he probably doesn't want to be doing that anymore and all those things. Uh, I just, I don't think that, I, I'm with you. I think it's a long shot that Kelly Oubre ends up resigning. But I don't. I, I am less inclined to think that it's only a starting position that he's looking for. I think he's looking for a lot of things, money included, but also an opportunity to get back to the playoffs because I do think that that matters for Kelly Oubre. And he said that in the podcast as well that he wants to be part of a winning organization, uh, and he wants. To I get think back partly to just because he wants to prove he can be a winner. Exactly. Because one of the big knocks on him is that he's a loser. Absolutely. <laughs> because he's had a negative plus minus every single year he's been in the career. It, every single season he's had and you know it's got to be i'm sure there's there's a we know that he didn't have the greatest stint with the phoenix with phoenix in terms of his relationship with the front office and what have you and i think there's got to be this like deep feeling in his heart that just kills him every single day to see the suns in the finals Mm -hmm. just thriving right when he leaves yeah, like that well, has eight no in the bubble him. without him too. I mean, they they it has to kill him. When he, yeah, absolutely. And it, I'm sure it doesn't help that when he left the lineup, the Warriors won 15 of the last 20 games. You know, there's a pattern here. There's a pattern. Yeah, here. So definitely, you know. And the thing is, they if they really think he deserves 20 mil, they got to explain that. Why is every team he's been on so much better when he leaves? With with Phoenix, obviously they made upgrades to the roster. Right. But one of the upgrades was. To get Chris Paul and to get Chris Paul, they unloaded him. Right. And so. and even before Chris Paul, like I said, they went eight and no in the bubble after Kelly Oubre got hurt in at the end of the regular season. So um that was their best stretch and it kind of laid the groundwork to go get Chris Paul. But uh I I I I think another thing that we should ask is why would the Warriors want Kelly Oubre? And I think you touched on it before. It's because if you if you let him walk away, it's not like you automatically get to fill his salary cap slot. You don't get to go sign a player for $15 million just because Ubre walks. That's not how it works. They have his bird rights, and that's how they'd be able to resign him. But they're operating as an over-the-cap team. And if he walks away, they don't have any cap space. And so the, I think that's why Bob Myers is saying that they, he wants Kelly Ubre back is because, hey, first of all, he's a productive player. He is an effective defender. There are things that he does that we like. I think that there are certainly things that – he does that we don't like, you know, but certainly he's a productive player. I mean, he had a 40 point game against Dallas. Like this is a guy who could do stuff on the floor. It's better to have him. I th- if you're a GM, I think you look at this as it's better to have more options than not, but also because of the asset play that if it doesn't, if he, if the fit doesn't click, if it doesn't work out six months from now, we could just trade him. And at least we could do that versus not being able to do that. Uh, now, if you sign him for $20 million, I don't know that anybody's do- banging on the door saying, hey, we want to trade for Kelly Oubre making $20 million. I don't think he's getting that. But, you know, I floated it out there to some people around other teams. 
they think that there are some teams that would be willing to give him $20 million if it was like a one-year deal or a one-and-one one or like a prove-it kind of contract. But I don't think that's what Ubre wants unless he just wants to take the bag and, and bet on himself, which I guess is his prerogative. He could certainly do that, but we'll see. That might be his best option. Yeah, we'll see. Um, all right, let's move on. I want to talk to you about uh, some of this trivia stuff that we got going on. Um, but first... Let's talk about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of vehicle makes and models, it can be impossible to stock all of the parts you need for your car at a traditional store, so do it easily online at rockauto.com instead. rockauto.com is a family business, serving auto parts to customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all of the parts available for your vehicle, then choose the brand, specifications, and prices you prefer. Best of all, the prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why would you spend twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck, and then write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. It's rockauto.com. Starting July 19th, check out the Ultimate Mock Draft 2021 podcast presented by Locked On and Odyssey, featuring analysis from the GOAT of NBA Mock Drafts, Chad Ford and Odyssey NBA local experts, uh, NBA experts Brian Scalabrini and former GM Ryan McDonough. Our local Locked On NBA experts will make selections and trades for your favorite basketball teams throughout this week-long special event. Search the Ultimate Mock Draft 2021 podcast on the new Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Odyssey is your audio home for all of the sports, podcasts, music, and news that matter to you. That's Odyssey, A-U-D-A-C-Y. Are you t- are you ready for trivia, Connor? I'm so ready, man. Well, Thursday trivia, we need some imaging for this. We need some music behind this, uh, which we don't have. But we'll get uh, maybe some Jeopardy music. Maybe I'll do it in post-production. We'll get some, something going on. So just pretend in your mind that that's what's happening. The pressure's on. So I try, I'm going to try to come up with a theme for all of these trivias. And the, this one I'm going to do... On the heels of Milwaukee making the NBA Finals, I wanted to flash back, not to this Bucks roster, that's too easy. I wanted to go back to the last Bucks roster that wasn't good. The last year Jason Kidd coached. The year before Giannis won his first of two MVPs. The year before the Bucks under Mike Budenholzer ascended to the top of the Eastern Conference. I wanted to look at that roster just to see where Milwaukee has come from. Look at some players on that team and see if you can remember those players and where they went to college. So that's our Thursday. I was pleasantly surprised by the response to Scott last time, by the way. I, I thought this might just be like a weird niche thing that we only th- we thought was interesting. But, hey, if you guys like it, we'll keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it because you can also play along with this. So, actually, what I want you to do is just give me a beat before. Like, if you know it immediately, just give, give the listener a beat to see if they can catch up. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Number one, Chris Middleton. Texas a and There you go. Uh, that was an easy one. Sterling Brown played for the Bucks that year. Where did he go to school? Sorry, you you. There was a glitch. I didn't I didn't hear the question. Sterling Brown played for the Bucks that year. Where did he go to school? SMU. SMU. Yep. All right. So you got the easy ones out of the way. Is that easy? Is Sterling Brown easy? So it was easy for me because I was a big Sterling Brown fan that year. Didn't really work out. I think he's in Houston now, uh, on the Rockets. All right. DeAndre Liggins. I believe he's a Kentucky guy. He is a Kentucky guy. All right. Three for three so far. This is where it gets uh, interesting. Brandon Jennings. Oh, well, he didn't go to college. Uh, He went to high school at Oak Hill uh, Academy. Uh, Before that, he's from Compton. Yeah, they get the bonus. Uh, I, believe was, the, Dominguez, uh, I, mean, I believe you went to Dominguez High School in Compton and then to Oak Hill Academy. I'm going to check on that Dominguez High School thing. I think you're actually right. This is the same, same high school as Tyson Chandler. Yeah. Let's see. If I'm right about that, I'll be happy. Dominguez and I'm Compton. Right you're that. absolutely right. Dominguez and Compton. Yep. Woo! <laughs> I'm actually really impressed with myself on that. And then he played overseas in Italy before he came. I believe Roma was the team he played for. 
Yeah, well, let's look that up too, because you might get the, the the rare triple bonus that I just made up. Uh, he did play in La Tomatica, Roma, in 2009. So I Connor gets the triple ball. bag there. Yeah. Not only right. did I get the high school, I got the pre the high school before the high school and the name of the international team we played for. Yeah, this is this is impressive. Um all right, last one. Are you ready? Yeah. Xavier Mumford. Ooh. I actually know that, I think. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Is that your final answer? Yes. It is Rhode Island. It is Rhode Island. That was like a 10-day uh, right. contract guy. So. <laughs> I think that was a 10-day contract guy. Yeah, I think Wasn't he played it? for one year. Pretty sure he played for one year. A part of one year. Part of one year. Uh, Xavier Mumford is from Rhode Island. All right. I have he was give you an opportunity. Warriors, I believe he was on the Warriors summer league team a couple of years ago. That's why I remember that. Oh. Uh, all right. I'm going to give you an opp opportunity to put your reputation on the line again, Connor. You can go double or nothing. We don't have any money or anything on the line here, so I don't really know. Double what or nothing about. to what? Okay. Double or nothing on whatever it is that we've just accomplished. Okay. You could take it or you could leave it. You could say, hey, you know what? I got eight out of five on Wes's dumb trivia game, and I'm going to walk away with my head held high. Or you could accept the challenge on this bonus one. I'll take it. Let's do it. I believe in my built abilities. I believe in you, too. This is, is this still Bucks? Right. Is this what? still Bucks? This is still the Bucks from that season. Hmm. I, I, how can you get harder than Xavier Mumford? There was one guy on the roster I literally never heard of until I was looking at the roster this morning. You've heard of Xavier Mumford? Yes, I did hear of Xavier Mumford. Yeah. Okay. I, I think most NBA fans don't know who that is. So, uh, most NBA fans are on us. Joel Balamboy. Oh, I know that. We uh, Weber State. Oh my god. The greatest uh, state player not named Damian Lillard. Is that true? Well, he's the only other NBA player in recent history um, other than Damian Lillard to come out of Weber State. Um, but he was a second-round pick out of Weber State by Utah. Didn't last in Utah. Ended up briefly having a cup of coffee on Milwaukee. Is no longer in the league. Playing in Russia now. Playing in Russia. Damn. But, uh, yeah, Weber State. He was like a 20-10 and 10 guy at Weber State. All right, well, I think that's an official count of nine out of five, which uh, beats your record last week of six out of five. That gives you a grand last total. Year, of... Last week was just kind of a warm up. This was now I'm like in the zone. Like I, I can you're bring, it, bring it you're on, man. Out. You're ready to yeah, go. I'm stressed out. Uh, well, we'll have another trivia for you next week. Maybe we'll do it actually on Tuesday. Uh, for now, this has been La Thursday with Connor Letourneau from the San Francisco Chronicle. Connor. Uh, you spent all your last several weeks working on this awesome three-part series about minor league baseball. We discussed, I believe, the first two parts last week. Uh, tell the listeners what that third part uh, is all about. Third part is uh, a profile of Marco Luciano, who's the Giants' top prospect, number seven prospect in all of baseball, kind of a 19-year-old prodigy out of the Dominican Republic. And in the in the story, I it's a profile of, Luciano, but I use it as a way to uh, get at the challenges a lot of these Latin American prospects face. You know, a lot of them are farmed out at a young age, end up leaving their families 11, 12 years old to go play at these academies in the DR and just to hopefully make the major leagues. And most of them don't even come close to making the majors. Luciano will almost definitely be the exception. He looks like he's going to be a big leaguer and potentially the future of the Giants. So um, big, you know, 3,000 word profile. I uh, really enjoyed writing it. Um, so hopefully you enjoy reading it. Uh, if 
if you're a Warriors fan, I presume you're probably you, well. You might be an A's fan, but you might also be a Giants fan if you you know care about winning teams or something like that. I think I just <laughs> pissed off half my listeners, but um, yeah, definitely go check that out over at the San Francisco Chronicle as well as everything else that Connell Turno is writing. That'll do it for us today. Remember to subscribe to Locked On Warriors on YouTube. I think I'm supposed to point down. You could do that. Subscribe. Follow the podcast wherever you get podcasts: Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, all these things. If you're having technical issues with Apple Podcasts, just you know, don't worry about it. Just search the podcast there and you can get the latest ups, updates on the episodes or just listen somewhere else. Hopefully Apple doesn't sue me for saying that. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at WC Goldberg. Email me over at wgoldberg at bayareanewsgroup.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That'll do it for us today. Connor, always good talking to you. 15 out of 10 over the last two weeks. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm proud of myself right now. <laughs>